Dear Presidents, Excellencies, I did not make any preparation for this speech because Due to personal reasons, I was not able to promise the organizers that I would participate in this meeting at all. Therefore, let me just comment on several matters using the notes I have made so far. I do not wish to make a detailed assessment of the European Union, her politics, politics and her relations with her member states. I just want to make a brief statement of what the European Union means to Slovakia. The current level at which Slovakia is today, the level of economic growth, the level of improving social conditions, the level of respecting the foreign policy and participating in it with a positive attitude is due to the fact that we became a member of the European Union and we also joined Schengen area and adopted the Euro. Yes, there were some reforms, but I need to say that even if Slovakia had not been in the European Union, we would still have been forced to implement these reforms, because otherwise we would get nowhere fast. The only question is whether the reforms we have to implement upon the decisions of the European Union are suitable for us or possibly for other countries, in the national sense. I do not believe we should speculate about details now, but we have to recall all the history of formation. Speaking from the viewpoint of Slovakia, as well as the new member states, the history of how we entered, what we had to do, and what we now find seemingly unbeneficial for us. I honestly believe that there are much more positive aspects, but I would like to react to Mr. President Valesa, who said that it is the past that sometimes prevents us from progressing. I could not agree more. However, I would like to say something about the European Constitution. A few years ago, the topic of the European Constitution was very frequented, whether we should accept it or we should not accept it. On one occasion, I personally said that it would have been good, but how should we deal with the fact that we do not want to be a super state, just like the United States of America. We want to be alone. We want to preserve our character. We want to be European. One way or another, we could not be in the arrangement like the United States of America, as some of you may not agree with me, America is not composed of national states. America basically does not have its nation. America has state citizens. And this is a major difference when assessing many aspects related to the, the country's development. When I said that Slovakia was he, he, we are perceived by the world. This is one of the three main milestones of Slovakia's existence. The first one is Slovakia has, all, has been ruled by someone else for 1,000 years. Slovak state did not exist. However, it managed to preserve its language, territory and faith. This is the first reason why we are still here. The second came after the formation of the first Czechoslovak Republic when the Czechs and Slovaks united and in this way preserved this, their statehood and national sentiment. And the third one, as I already said, is our accession to Europe. Continuing in what Mr. President Valesa was speaking about the Constitution, I would like to add Then the day, then journey towards the Constitution's wording 
was rather difficult, that would secure more than just an economic coexistence of the European Union member states, because today, and this is my personal opinion, European Union does need such a document. However, it does not need a constitution. This would only prove that all of us have been saying, as I mentioned at the beginning, that is, the European Union does not want to be a super state. And, and as we do not want to be a super state, we do not need a super constitution. Because the countries do have their constitutions. And any other any other constitution would make those rather difficult relations even more complicated. They say time is a good healer, and in this case as well, it will help us find an optimum solution for the future relationships, even though I do not assume it would be a constitution. Yes, the future will reveal what is impossible. In my opinion, the Union will have rather se severe difficulties to deal with the positions of national parliaments, in relation to the European Parliament. This relation is currently, in my opinion, an unsolvable problem. National parliaments have their positions and rights, and we also say that the Union wants to save her face. Yet the national parliaments want to save their face as well, mainly in connection with their culture, their own original structure, but also certain freedom. I do not mean just economic one. So it may happen, a member state will find itself in an exceptionally difficult situation situation which we have experienced a couple of times. And the situation will be concerned just the state and she will be forced to help herself alone. So this much about the issue that the European Union will have to solve. I personally, and again, this is my opinion and I have presented before, I think that A national member of parliament in the European Parliament is in a quite difficult position. Who and what he will advocate? He will either advocate the opinions of his or her state, his or her parliament, or a global position or opinion of the European Parliament. Some time ago, I commented on this issue, and I proposed that the European Union, European Union Parliament, could be bicameral. I have not always come to an agreement with the others, but in my opinion, there could be a division with similar national parliaments, something like a House of Citizens of the European Parliament which would be, in fact, like the current parliament, but there would be a house of the states as well. The house of states, or let us say nations, would be represented by the current national parliaments, and these would have veto power. It would be interesting, but it would also create space for defending some affairs concerning individual countries with their own cultures, histories, and certain well-established things. But of course, 
they would not be allowed to oppose the European politics. I think the current time reveals one big mistake that we are not able to solve now. And this is reflecting in the crisis. I will not speak in details about Brexit, as you have all spoken about, about immigration, the future of the politics of the United States of America, and soon about Italy, about Germany. All of these are problems or questions that will be answered by the future. So if someone today wanted to rigorously say that the European Union would look like or this or that in the future, I would not believe it so much. What is the biggest issue, as I perceive it, about taking up the questions we find so difficult to address? These are the dis decisions of ours that we make without clearly proved impact. If you make a decision without an assessment of the impact, this decision may not be good. And I mean in terms of foreign policy as well. You know, is African spring what it is? Maybe it would have been if we had stayed out of it. Therefore, I think the European Union as well as the United States should not be in such a position of meddling in the issues and affairs of the national states. I do not mean just Europe, not at all. Can you imagine if in Syria, if we had not meddled in Syria, all of us who are there now, would there be as many dead? And would so many people have left? Would so many people immigrate? No, I truly believe that Syria would have established order herself, maybe and I'm sorry about this, it would have been bad and there would have been some dead anyway. Some would have been maybe imprisoned and civil rights would have been restricted, but there would not have been thousands of the dead. Villages would not have been bombarded, children would not have been killed, schools and hospitals would not have been bombed. So globally, I would like to say, let us make decisions if we can foresee the impact. If the impact is negative, let us better avoid it and look for other solutions. If it is positive, let us help. But I promised myself I would not speak long. And I would just comment on some of these issues that occurred here. You know, it is hard to speak about it but Professor Unger also mentioned the Berlin Wall. I think we have not experienced harder times since then. And how can I see it? Because I can see we have been losing the interest to cooperate. We rather look for the world problems. We want to solve in our own way without knowing the impact. Whether you like it or not, there is a Cold War here again. We have been building certain barriers. Now you will maybe regard me as a person with a wrong opinion. But we have now been this close to the Third World War since the Caribbean crisis. And I believe that no one wants to escalate the circumstances to reach such a terrible situation. Again, it is up to us. How will international affairs and cooperation further develop, in my opinion? Superpowers were here, superpowers are here, 
and they will go on. And they will be solving their problems without being deeply interested in a country called Slovakia or Czech Republic. I would not like to name other countries. This is how I can predict their future poli politics. All in all, I think that the future President Trump has been suggesting this as well. We can hear also voices of the new candidates for the French president, implying that the superpowers will again say, this is my fear, this is yours, this is, uh, and we will not meddle in some affairs. I do not want to say that this is going to be like the in the times of the Berlin Wall, that you will not be able to travel to trade. No, no one will change this state of cooperation for sure. It will remain preserved if we ourselves do not spoil it. But perhaps there will be affairs in which those great imaginations of democratism and liberalization will meet some boundaries. Democracy has some boundaries too. Boundless democracy does not bring order. Other, the other way around. I really would like to recall the words of Winston Churchill, who said, if, if I paraphrase him, democracy is the words we have, but we have not made up anything better. We have to live in democracy. So the world will solve its problems within this framework. This is what I think. As I have said, some might disagree with me, but time will tell who was right. I would be glad if there was just cooperation, friendship and solidarity in the world. And I think this is a mission of the European Union as well. But it is us who must behave and conduct ourselves this way in Europe. Thank you that I could present my speech and I would like to apologize for speaking much more than I had wanted. But looking at you, I could see you were listening, so I took the liberty of speaking more. Thank you very much.